Hey guys, it's Steph here with The Flower Fanatic. So as you can see, I've got a lot of plants on this table. So this year has been incredibly frustrating for me because plant pricing seems to have gone up by 50% and last year it seemed like it was going up a little bit. So this year I've had to find ways to save money. So I want to get on here and share with you what I do. So I have been dividing like crazy. So I kind of want to change the way you think about buying plants when you go to the nursery. So before I even buy a plant, I see if I can divide it into three or five plants. So I bought one recently. I'll show you an example of that. This plant right up here is the Blue Starship Lobelia. I only bought five of them, but now I have 11 of those plants. So I saved, I'm guessing 20 bucks, 30 bucks that way. No, they were like nine bucks a piece. So I saved like $40. Um, anyways, there are some pros and cons to dividing, but I definitely think the pros outweigh the cons. So let's take a look at some of these plants. I do have a few examples of ones that don't divide very well, um, just through experience. First, let's take a look at the plant that I just recently bought from the nursery, show you how I divide them. And then I'll give you examples of many different plants that I have put in my yard that I've divided. There are so many out there, so I can't go over all of the list, but it is such a great way to save money. I just wanted to add that most of these are just gonna be your herbaceous perennials that I'm focusing on today. I did divide a limelight hydrangea, but I'm not gonna really be covering your woody shrubs. Before I start dividing this one that I just got from the nursery, I just wanted to show you what I have going on here. So I've got these containers from last year. I bought a lot of plants. I like to save them. This is perfect for dividing. And I've got some potting soil over here. You don't have to do this necessarily. You can just divide and put directly in the ground, but I'm not quite ready to do that. And I like to let my plants recover just a little bit before I get them into the soil. So I buy in bulk. It's a lot cheaper. And then I've also got this knife from my kitchen. I can't find my hori hori, but I want something that's sharp that's gonna slice through like butter. So this is gonna be perfect. Don't mind me, it's getting really messy over here. I have 13 containers, so I think that's about how many plants I'm gonna try and get out of all of these. I could probably get a few more up to 20, but I don't need that many. So they're all ready to go. I didn't pre-moisten the soil. It's probably better to do it that way. Holds the moisture a little bit better, but I'm lazy, so I'll just water them after and that's fine too. Okay, so let's take a look at this first plant. I was really excited about this one. This is the Sirostro bellflower. Never seen this one before. Look at those cute bell-shaped flowers. And these ones I definitely want to plant in massing. It gets about 15 to 18 inches tall and 24 inches wide. So I'm going to go ahead and plant them around my hostas. But I need about five of them. See this intense number of stems? I can tell that they each have their little separate root system. So I'm going to take it out of its container. I hope this isn't too confusing. Cut it in half right here. <clears throat> I like when they're a little bit on the dry side too because the soil's a little bit more firm before cutting. And look at that, voila, I've got two plants. Definitely gonna get five out of this one. So now that I've cut it in half, I'm gonna go ahead and cut it in half again. <laughs> I might lose a few stems on this one, but not too bad. So there we go. Shake off a few of those stems, but it's just gonna be fine. Each one has its nice separate root system. So I've got three at this moment. I might only get four. We'll see. I'll be careful with the fifth one. I'm gonna cut that one in half again. This is starting to get a little bit risky. I'm gonna go ahead and pot these up. I don't think I'm gonna make a fifth one at this I can feel them and they're getting a little bit weak, but that was really exciting. So these grow pretty fast and they're gonna recover nicely. And I think you'll be surprised that you're not set back too much by doing this. Okay, we're off to a good start. I ended up getting five. So look at that. This table's already pretty much filled up. And if you times 14 by four, I don't know what that adds, adds up to right now. Let's see my math skill. 56 bucks I just saved. Right here is a phlox. So let's take a look at a smaller plant. So you see these three plants? These all can be divided. I only need two of these, so I'm gonna cut it in half right here. This one is good for the full sun to part shade. And it's a little bit more drought tolerant once established. Gently move that out. <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna take this corner right here. Get out of the way, Brunera. Just wanting to be a part of this. And then I'm gonna go ahead and just gently make sure I'm not cutting the other side. I'll bring those down. The chickens have been frustrating this year with some of my flocks. We have new baby ones and they chomp down some of the stems, so I need a few more. They'll recover, but just in case. So there you go. Okay, why not? Let's make it into three. The 
this is make sure it's not too dry where the soil just crumbles but not too wet where the soil just crumbles I'm just gonna take this put it in here and then cover it with some more of that soil really easy I am not a clean one here's one of those shade loving plants the anemone so these be cautious with anemone I'll have a video that's coming out with it but I love these these are definitely one I've got to have for my fall bloom it comes out later than most of your perennials and they just look so good in large numbers and masses wow it's really stuck to the back of this container let me pop those holes a little bit here we go but this is kind of like those canterbury bells wow look at that root system this one's kind of forming its own little plant This is the honoring Jobert. I think that's how you say it. It's a white flower. To show you a few more because there's so many, but this is the tall verbena. I'm gonna put this in my cutting guard with some Heliopsis. These are really drought tolerant, love the sun, and are great for your bouquets. And so right here, I think I'm only gonna be able to get one out of this, one extra one right there. But I've got another plant. Hopefully I can get a few more out of that one. Yep, so I'll be able to get another one out of that one. So out of these two plants, I'll probably get four. I'm not gonna show myself cutting them anymore because you get the point, but this cone flower, this is where it can get a little bit confusing because they're not quite as obvious, but cone flowers are another one of those. They have these cute little flats. Let's look at them. They go well with those phlox and some liatris, but right there, I'm gonna cut down the center. These recover really well. I've planted one and divided one that just had like two little stems on it and it did just fine. I'll show you this one just because it's a little bit more confusing. This is where I've gotta be really careful and make sure I cut straight and not sideways. Here we go. Go slow. There we go. Perfect. All right, that was super rewarding. So look how much I filled up this area. I know I took a little from here, but I just wanted to show you a few more. These are the Shalone Hot Lips, Turtle Lips. They love the shade and a ton of moisture, but these ones grow a little bit more slowly by rhizomes. So you can look in there. They have one, two, three. I can immediately divide these into three. So I'm actually just gonna divide and put directly into the ground. And then this is the Queen of the Meadow, another shade loving, well, part shade. Um, loving plant but it loves the moisture so I'm going to put this in my cutting garden for texture they're really great for cutting and there is a few I can get out of that one I'm going to do a nice long row of those grasses easiest ones to divide I never buy more than like three plants of grass there is one thing with grasses they are slow to take off so you're going to set them back a little bit but I've done it with all of my Japanese grasses because those are some of the most expensive ones to buy in the store don't try and divide lupin. I'm just going to give you caution to that. You can look in there and see there's no way to really divide that. The plants are really good at telling you if they can be divided or not. And then the Brunera right here is better to divide as they get more mature. I don't see any way to divide this. But once they mature, you can lift them up in spring and divide them. And then right here, I want to walk over and just show you a few more in my garden. So here are some of those Japanese grasses. And I was a little bit worried about this one, but it's doing fine. It's put on a lot of growth. So there's an example of a shade loving grass. This is the, there's an all gold one. I can't remember what variety this is, but once these fill in with my tricolor beach that is so slow to grow, it's gonna be so pretty. If you've watched my recent video, here are my salvia. I have seven plants right here. And I think I started out with three and they bounce back. They're recovering really nicely. And this is the Cardona variety. So it gets a little bit taller. I like its form and shape a little bit more, a little bit more graceful. Here's one that I wouldn't try to divide is your geranium until they're a little bit more mature. You can go for it, but I find they just don't love to be transplanted or divided when they're young. So it's something you can try if you want, but they naturalize and spread really well. Okay, I'm just gonna show you a few more shade loving ones that I've divided. I've just been going nuts this year. I'm in the process of creating my shade garden right here. I have three oak leaf hydrangeas back there. Please let me know if I should put ferns or hostas in here. I cannot decide. I think I'll probably put some hostas because I've got ferns somewhere else, but this is a stilby. So I've made three plants out of this one. We've got one, two, three. So they're recovering really good. And then I'm just gonna put them all throughout here. They do love the moisture and the shade. They get a nice flat, spiky flower from 
I think it's summer to late summer. And then they keep their interest once those blooms fade because that cute little spike stays and it turns a little bit on the brown side, but it's still really pretty. Here is a flower bed I just planted this year. So fern I divided into three. I cannot find ferns anywhere this year. They're not in the nurseries. And so I was really happy that I had this one plant that I could divide. And then the Astrantia, which is a more expensive perennial, well, in my nursery. And so these divide really well. They like the shade, the moisture, and I think ferns and Astrantia are a beautiful combination, but as you can see, it doesn't look like much yet because of all those divisions. You can either pack them full or be patient. So I'm just gonna go ahead and be patient because I don't really have another choice. Here are some Solomon Sill, and these are the ones I just did in my recent video, and I have spread them throughout here. And then those along with your hostas for the shade garden are definitely some of the easier ones to do. They're gonna be so pretty when they naturalize and fill in for their texture all year round. And then I've got some foxglove in here. I'm just so excited to see all of this happen. All right, guys, I hope you liked that little video on dividing plants. There are a few cons, especially with some of your more slowing growing perennials that you divide like your Solomon Sill. You're gonna have to wait a little bit longer to start seeing some blooms for them to start filling in. Uh, they do grow with under rhizomes, so they just take a little bit longer. And then some of them are gonna bloom the first couple years because of it. Um, but a lot of these definitely will, like your catmint, they take off like crazy. I've divided some of those, the salvia, as you can see they're still blooming. Um, the coneflower, the phlox, some of those, they just grow really fast. So you're not set back by very much. And then the tall verbena will start to naturalize and it will get blooms on one little stem. The pros for me is I save so much money and I'm okay being patient. It teaches me to practice a little bit of patience and it's enjoyable to see the progress. If I had all of my flower beds lush and full at one time, I would get really bored and I wouldn't have any content for YouTube, right? Anyway, so I hope you guys like this video. I hope I will help you save a little bit of money and especially change the way you buy plants at the nursery. Thanks so much for watching. Make sure you hit the like button if you like this video and you found it useful. As far as this video goes, I think I'm done. I've just got a huge mess to clean up and so many plants that I've got to put in the ground. Thankfully, I know where I'm going to plant them and so it'll be pretty quick. I'm just going to give these a nice soaking. I haven't done it yet. They'll probably sit in these containers for a few days until I can get them in the ground, but thank you for the support. I love doing these videos and it's so much fun sharing some of my knowledge and some of the things I learned. Anyways, have a great day gardening and I will talk to you later. Bye.